We are doing the special weapons tier list. In this tier list, we'll be talking about what I think are going to be the very best weapons in Splatoon 3 before the game actually comes out. We've got every single special weapon here that we know of. There are 15 of them. And uh, we're going to try and start. And I'm going to give my like own analysis of what I think is the best one. And um, tier them accordingly if that makes sense and this is all in comparison to how i think that guns will all work against each other just so you know how it's how i'm rating it all right it is time to get started guys i mean the first one that we have right here and i'm very very biased when it comes to ink storm ink storm 100 if we're looking at it in this game it is definitely a support special it puts paint on the ground which is great it also always removes people out of a certain area but the thing is is that there's a lot of ways i feel like it's going to be dealt with one of which is going to be by let's say this one big bubbler so i'm pretty sure big bubbler is going to be one of those main counters for that like if you're facing a team that has big bubbler it's not going to be so much of an issue to actually like fight against ink storm and all that type of stuff personally i really like ink storm it's a nice special that gives a little bit of chip damage and you can just move people out the out the way almost all the time just because of all the other specials and how strong i think they are going to be considering with ink storm you cannot spam it at all I'll give it B. But the thing is, it's more B and C. And this is just in comparison to like every other special that's in there right now. I'm thinking almost C. And I actually might try, I might even change that uh, as I as I go along. So what do we think of Zipcaster? Now, Zipcaster, it's basically Inkjet, except it's you becoming Spider-Man and you can swing pretty much anywhere around the map. I'm thinking Zipcaster is only going to be really good depending on how good the player is if you understand me. I feel like somebody who is mechanically gifted who uses the Zipcaster is going to be really, really good with it. You can swing to other side of the map and you'll be there for a brief moment, but then you're going to be brought back and recalled back. I feel like you have to play it safely in some stances where it's like Inkjet where you have to set yourself up and uh, put your recall point for your Zipcaster in a place where people aren't going to notice so it doesn't get camped. You might want to use it near your teammates. Uh, just so that it's always being protected so you can go in safe you can go in get your get your kill and come back safely i mean i feel like just because of that it becomes a little bit of a liability if you understand me in that kind of sense so honestly just because of the liability down i don't think i could bring it i don't even think i can put it in a i'm not saying it's gonna, not going to be a good special because personally well i feel like it will it's going to be good but it's also depending on how good the person is so i think it's fair to put the Zipcaster in B. The person's not that good, it's gonna be D. If the person's really good, it's gonna be at least A. The liability part brings it down to a B, you know? That makes perfect sense to me, if you understand me, so. So let's move on to the fridge, the uh, the tactic cooler. Now the tactic cooler, it's hard to rate this one at the same time. I'd like to say that we don't exactly know every single ability until we actually get to try it ourselves. Other than we know of it being, well, it having more run speed and swim speed and having the intensify action gear perk, I still have feelings that it might still have like a variety of effects, as they said. It might have things like ink efficiency, ink recovery, all that type of stuff. Ink res as well. Funny enough, it could have ink res too. Now, what if it has all those abilities? If it does, then that's insane. It'd be actually really cool if it's like, if, you, if your ink resistance goes up with a tactic cooler. If that's the case, it would be an A easily. If that's not the case, I think it's like the highest B there, you know? I like the fact that with Tactic Cooler, you can give it to your teammates, right? You can give it to all your teammates. And I also like the fact that you can also like place it almost anywhere on the map. Cause of that, and cause of the ability buffs, and let's just say, let's just say that Tactic Cooler gives you ink resistance. Let's just say it does. In this case, we're gonna leave it at A. Getting uh, power-ups or special or perk power-ups, I, I, I'm telling you, it makes such a difference to how fighting can be in uh, terms of Splatoon. I don't know how you got, how you guys feel when it comes to like having just like a main or swim speed and versus no main or swim speed. It's such a difference when it comes to actually fighting when you're a T-Tech or as N-Zap or even a run like a run speed uh, ends up or anything like the difference is wild this being able to give it to everybody as long as they're close by and whenever it does so much for the team so it, it's a super supportive special it's not an in karma if it was in karma it'll just get an s but i feel like it does uh, it does so much and gives so many extra abilities to all your teammates that i think it's fair especially for combat it's gonna help uh, your teammates just that much more 
I think it's good. I think it's a solid, it's a solid one. Let's move on to, let's move on to Inkjet. We know Inkjet. Of course we know Inkjet, guys. Guys, do you know Inkjet? Put hands up in chat if you know what Inkjet is. If you don't, then I don't know where the hell you been. Can I get some hands in the chat, please? Thank you very much. Hands up. We, we do know what Inkjet is. Oh, okay, Ricky doesn't know what Inkjet is. That's sad. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what Inkjet is. It's, it's this thing that allows you to fly in the sky, and it's great. And in Splatoon 2, this special is really dang strong. But there's one thing that this special doesn't have. It doesn't have an Ink Armor. In a lot of teams, you pair this thing with an Ink Armor. Play competitive and you don't pair this thing with an Ink Armor, I don't know what you're doing because you can get so many free kills by pairing Inkjet with Ink Armor. And generally, just because of that, Ink Jet won't even deserve A. I think it goes way down in the tier list. Inkjet's really good, but I feel like it's gonna be played a lot more passively than before. I feel like you can't just like get in completely close to somebody's face, especially anybody who has like a long range weapon of any sort. Like obviously Inkjet can fight long range too, but I feel like you're going to want to be trying to position this in higher ground more so than more so than ever. In this case, I don't think Inkjet deserves a C because I feel like Inkjet, like, against any close range weapon gives off so much pressure and it's probably going to destroy it regardless. But the longer range weapons it's going to struggle with and in a lot more fights it's going to also struggle with because it doesn't have the the help of ink armor. So personally, I think, I think it's going to get a B as well. I think it'll be in between, well, not even in between these two. Uh, I think it'll be around here. It'll be the highest B for now from what we've got uh, out of all of them. So let's do Big Bubbler. Right, Big Bubbler. Big Bubbler, guys. Big man, Big Bubbler. Now, I think Big Bubbler is just going to be way too good. <laughs> well, not even way too good, but I think Big Bubbler is going to be really good in Splatoon 3. Big Bubbler, you throw it down, you can protect your teammates. That's also great. Big Bubbler, you can throw it down, let's say if we're playing Splat Zones. You can put it down literally on the zone. You're probably protecting the zone and not allowing any ink to get on the zone. So it's just great for stalling in that case. Big Bubbler, when you put yourself inside it, you can shoot outside. If you've seen the Splatoon uh, Turf War gameplay, where you saw the charger shoot through the big bubbler while they're inside it, that's potential of, okay, I can just chill in my shield. I'm protected. What are you going to do? Obviously, you can shoot the top. That's going to be a thing. But even then, it's not going to do anything to you, right? Like, you can put literally any long-range weapon in a big bubbler. Like, let's say a Jet Squelcher or 96 Gal or Spider Shot Pro or Squeezer. It's going to do some damage. Hydra Splatling, Heavy Splatling, that's going to do some damage. You can pl put almost anything in there. And on the top of that, when you've got things like, like these specials, Literally all these specials, actually. When it's going up, up against a big bubbler, you're protecting, again, Tri-Strike. Hopefully. Don't know yet, but I assume that you will be. You're completely protected against Crab Tank. No doubt. Obviously, the Crab Tanks won't even have to shoot the top, but you're protected nevertheless. If you're being shot at, what you should do is just back up from the big bubbler from, so you're on the side that's not where the Crab Tank is. You're definitely protected by a tri uh, Trizooka. You're definitely protected by a Booyah Bomb. You're definitely protected by... Should we even say the name? Should we even say the name? The one that shall not be named, right? <laughs> so, due to all these factors, I generally feel like Big Bubbler is going to be so dang good in Splatoon 3. You notice the beacon inside it. We don't know, of course, if you can jump to it, obviously. We don't know that. But if there's a teammate inside that Big Bubbler, that's a free jump. So get some quick super jump or anything like that. You can get in that big bubble and you can get there pretty dang safely. That is just my opinion right now. That might change when Splatoon 3 comes out. But currently, from what I've seen, at least from that Turf War trailer, I think Big Bubbler definitely deserves an S. So we're gonna put it there too. Ultra Stem. This is another offensive special that I feel like gets nerfed due to the fact that you can't now armor pair it. It wasn't necessarily a thing that you needed to armor pair this weapon. It's something that you can do in Splatoon 2 that makes it much better but it's just the thing that you cannot armor pair it. If, it. if this is a close range thing, like I'll give the Ultra Stamp an A tier at least. If you're doing really well with it, then yeah, it is great. It pops the Raymaker super fast. It applies good pressure, but the thing is smart players know how to play against Ultra Stamp. I feel like you always have to set up yourself 
to get this thing going, you know? And also, I think in terms of like utility and how much it's really doing for the team, I can't rate it that highly because like, of course you can stamp around with it, that's cool. People can just move away and they'll just be like, oh, look at that guy, he's just stamping it around. Wow, what an idiot. Or of course you can throw the the, the thing and you can throw it whatever you want, but like assuming the, the projectile, the ultra stamp projectile is as slow as it is still in Splatoon 2, it's so easily avoidable. It's such a fun special to use, not gonna lie. Competitive wise, it's just like, well, I feel like there's just so many better specials than what Ultra Stamp is, you know? I don't think it deserves D, of course. It's not trash. And just to be fair, every special here has a use and it's definitely pretty decent. But I think Ultra Stamp, at least for Splatoon 3 standards, no armor or anything like that, it's, uh, it's, I can only give it a C. That's what I'm going to do for the Ultra Stamp right now. The things that are going to destroy Ultra Stamp, Cloud will destroy it. Inkjet will be decent against it. I'm not too sure about Big Bubbler, but if you throw the, the stamp at the Big Bubbler, it's not going to do well. You stamp on the Big Bubbler, we don't know how that's going to work. Zipcaster, I think the situation against it would be, would be weird. But the thing is, I feel like with Zipcaster and compared to Ultra Stamp, is that their usability compared to it is just way better because you can use the, the Zipcaster to still get behind backlines really quickly, you know? It just seems like that kind of special that's going to allow it to do that, you know? What if I throw my Ultra Stamp um at the back line that's not reliable if i want to get my zip caster guy in there who's using luna blaster and they can just tap him twice or octobrush and just can just slap him a couple of times like it just seems way easier uh, using zip caster so now killer whale 5.1 could be as strong as it wants to be really it's that it's really only gonna ever capitalize on people who are standing still i don't think it should be getting kills if people are just standing still like if people are standing still and they're just letting the killer whale 5.1 uh what's it called, kill them, then that's just a huge skill issue against them. Because I definitely feel like you should not be getting killed by this, just by this alone. This is the kind of special where you put it down and you use your weapon uh, to actually finish off the kill. This is just, it, it's like tender missiles in a way, except mostly close range. I feel like it's probably going to be better at close range. It's just to keep that player moving for like the next five seconds or whoever. It's not supposed to locate on everybody. I think it's going to be locates on two people, but if you're using this against like a charger or a anything that's in a close range situation, I feel like it does so well against them. I'm basing this mainly off what gameplay I saw from the Turf War trailer, especially when the 52 gal had it um, or had used it. And it's just like, they used it and it was like used as a second player so that they can actually take somebody else. So I can rate Killer Whale 5.1 pretty highly. I feel like I can put Killer Whale 5.1 on a, uh, a. Because personally, I feel like what is so good uh, about specials like this is that if it can make you move uh, and you're forced to do it, that can do so much in making or allowing the your team, the team that you're on, to actually capitalize and do something off it, you know, or play off it. And it doesn't even have to be yourself that plays off it. It could be any of your teammates to play off it. So a pressure, like honestly, yeah, pressure specials are so dang good. And we, we know that, especially from how Tenta missiles are in Splatoon 2. They are so dang good just because it makes everybody moves all the time. Just on the fact that it doesn't kill or it does, or it does kill, obviously, but just on the fact that it doesn't like independently always guarantee a kill, um, that's why I'll put on A, at least. Maybe higher A than Tacticooler, because I think it's, I think, personally, it's a really solid special. Right, Crab Tank. I think Crab Tank's gonna be decent, but I don't think it's gonna be, like, super crazy. And I'm gonna tell you why, because it's just the, I think it's just how the movement really works. It's a crab. It only sidesteps. If it's going forward and backwards, it's not gonna be that quick. But if it's sidestepping, that's fine. I think it's good, but... I think you are still vulnerable to some extent from especially the blank. So I feel like it's going to be a thing where people are definitely going to get flanked. That's not the worst thing because as long as uh, you're being aware of a flank or anything like that, if you are aware of it, you just curl up into your bull, roll, roll away, and then turn your attention to that flank, right? You're vulnerable and invulnerable in two ways, of course. But I don't think that makes it bad. Like, I don't think just because you can get flanked or because you're invul- because you're vulnerable uh, means it's a it's a terrible special because I think it's really good just that just cause that you can defend yourself in like some high pressure situations if you want to like you can decide to fight or you can decide to not fight 
if you want to as well. So it does have good range too. That's probably one thing I can really give Crab Tank uh, some props. If it's on any sort of short range weapon, like the Clash Blaster, which it is, and the splash matic Of course, kill in two ways. It's a three-shot kill if you're doing the turret mode. It's a two-shot kill if you use the bomb mode. You can kind of decide which one you want to do. Because you can be invulnerable, I think it has to be above inkjet. It does have really good range. I don't know if it's longer than the ink the inkjet, but I think it doesn't really matter because it could be a thing where you roll yourself towards somebody and then break the distance of that range anyway. So it wouldn't really matter that much. Um, so that's why like, I feel like it's fair to put it above inkjet, but just a high B in that case, if you understand me. Ink Vacuum. Now it's the Poltergeist, three, the Poltergeist 3000, of course. Imagine if we actually get some weapon skins for specials, that'd be actually going kind of nuts, but it, it varies a lot, I think. One thing I really hope that Ink Vacuum can at least do is that it can at least suck up and defend itself against any legitimately any um special so like let's say you're facing against someone who's using crab tank i would i would expect that the ink vacuum can take in everything that the crab tank does i would also expect it if it could do the same with inkjet i don't expect it to do it with rain cloud because rain cloud is literally everywhere i don't expect it to well that would be funny if it could, you could just suck up the hammer, imagine that. Like, someone throws a hammer at you and it's just like, minimizes and goes inside the vacuum, like... <laughs> that would actually be hilarious. Apart from that, that bomb explosion is really dang cool. But, at the same time, I'm not too sure how much it's gonna do uh, on the offensive side, you know? Because you have to like, wait for it to like, charge up and set up and... Smart players would probably like not take the time to actually look at it, you know? Smart players would not take the time to actually just like mindlessly start shooting in the vacuum, you know? Don't get me wrong, the bomb part of the ink vacuum is amazing. It's great. I think it's sick, honestly. It kind of depends on a lot of stuff, right? It is a literal shield and I think that's great. I think it's a literal, it's a literal shield and it protects you against a lot of stuff. I'm still skeptical. I'm still very skeptical. I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical of it. I'm just thinking the case of how players could play against it, you know? I don't feel like I can put it in A. I'm just going to say, like, the radius is huge and that's great. But at the same time, I feel like it's still very avoidable. Like, I feel like you should have the awareness. Like, if you see a vacuum, to not shoot at it mindlessly. Not charge it up mindlessly, because if you do charge it up, then you're going to get a huge blast. If you don't, then you're not. If you know the vacuum's out there, then you expect that the bomb is going to hit, come to you and hit you, right? If that bomb is coming to you and you have that, you have an understanding of where that's going to come from, then you're going to move it up. You're going to move to a, a, a specific spot where you're not going to have to take that, that, take that kind of damage, right? At this point in time... I think I'm going to leave it at the highest C, you know. Until we know more, I actually probably will change this when um, we actually get Splatoon 3. Until we know more, I will leave it at C for now, right? And you guys can give me an L or anything like that. This is, this, right now, it's my opinion. And I, I understand too, yeah, Team Synergy, it's going to be amazing for Team Synergy. No, no, I'm not denying that. And I'm not saying it's horrible. I'm not saying it's that. Because first of all, every single thing on this list is great. All specials are really good, you know? All specials are really good. I like the fact with Ink Vacuum that if you are near somebody, you can suck up literally anything and you can be protecting them to get them to another place. Cool. But let's say you don't suck up all the ink or that player on the other team knows not to shoot at you. What are you going to do then, you know? What are you going to do? You've got, you've put yourself in one place to another and now you shoot a really weak shot and you've got your teammate in a certain area, right? You've done that. But what happens when that's all done and then everyone starts pummeling you and everyone starts, you know, closing in? We know three weapons that have this right now. We know the 96 has it, the Jet Squelcher. We know the Charger has it. What's the Charger going to do? Like the Charger will get you there, but the Charger is going to like run away. <laughs> Once it's got you there, it's going to run away. And it's just going to be like, okay, my job here is done. I'm out, you know? And at the same time too, once you're using that vacuum, you're not putting, you're not outputting paint on the floor. Everybody else on the other team is outputting more paint because you've put your weapon away and now you're not painting. For now, I'm leaving it at sea. Try strike or triple ink strike. I've been saying this the first time we've seen this special weapon. This thing's going to be a problem. You have so much pressure offensively. You have so much pressure defensively and you also paint the ground. 
at the same time too, once you've thrown all your th once you've thrown all your stuff, you can start charging your tri strike again. This thing is spammable, just like how tenta missiles are. I'm just gonna say this thing is gonna be so dang good on splat zones. It's kind of falling into the same sense of cl in cloud, but it's spammable. It's more offensive. It can get kills pretty easily as long as it's you can you can corner people by throwing in a tri strike and you can just like a <laughs> you just. That's what you do to them, dude. It's actually insane. It's like it's literally it's like three booyah bombs, but you throw them everywhere. <laughs> they may be a little smaller, but you just throw three of them. I can just see situations like even with the slosher, where like, okay, damn, I'm being pressured by uh, one guy over here and one guy over here. I'm gonna use my tri strike and throw it all around me. You know, I'm gonna throw it all around on the floor and then use that to either kill them or use that to run away or either, either use that to put some more paint on the ground. I feel like there are so many different things that you can do a tri strike that will do s s wonders, whether it be defensively, offensively, and neutrally at the same time, where it's just even, you just need to stall things. So personally, I think tri strike 100% deserves the S tier. Any weapon that gets that can paint really well, you're gonna be you're gonna be spamming this like crazy, dude. It's really hard to see what is wrong or what can be wrong with Tri Strike because I think it does so much. You know, I think it's going to do so much. Right, where are we going to put the Reef Slider? This is such a solo special, dude. <laughs> so it doesn't exactly help the team. I think it's okay. It's a, it's a decent special, but at the same time, I feel like it does have a couple of setbacks. Obviously, when you use a Reef Slider, you can motorcycle your way in and you only have a certain distance. You can only go in a straight line as well, which is not necessarily the problem. I mean, I guess it's just a thing you can't turn left or right with it, which honestly, if you could, that'd be so dope, dude. Just like, because just imagine this, you on the Reef Slider and you just Tokyo Drift into someone. You're just like, dude, 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 dude. <laughs> And then you just blow up on them, dude. Like, that would be so sick. <laughs> it would actually be so dope. I wish that they they buffed this thing, that they allowed people to actually do that. Like, <laughs> because it can't do that, I think it sets it back a lot. The thing is that I really have a problem with Resider is that it reminds me a lot of Splashdown, but it's not quite like Splashdown because it's way faster. At the same time, on the Resider, I don't know how vulnerable you are. But you also you are moving really fast. I'm really struggling with this one. You can decide how far you actually want to go in uh, with the reef slider. Like if you want to cancel early because if you think it's going to be too dangerous, you can cancel out of it, and that's good. But the thing is, if you still go in and commit and it doesn't go well, you're screwed. That's okay if it's it's invulnerable when you're about to explode. That period is not long at all. I'm just saying. I feel like you are vulnerable as long as you're on the bike moving. You know. That just makes sense. That makes sense to me. Just cause this is a very selfish special. Personally for me, it, I feel like it doesn't do a crazy amount to the team. I feel like it's more of a C. I don't even think I can put it in B minus because it's it's like, it's kind of, it's. I think it's higher than Ultra Stem, but I don't think I can put it in the same realm where it's doing like something like Zipcaster is doing, where it's literally slinging itself from one side of the map to the other and it can do so much and take out a key part of the enemy team, you know? Or it's supporting like how these weapons are, where it has like long range and you can reach several different angles in order to actually take out key parts of the team. But at the same time, I can't put Ink Vacuum on the same realm as Reef Slider. I'm gonna put the Ink Vac higher now. At least the Ink Vacuum's gonna do something to their backline. I don't think the Reef Slider will do anything. It will, it will hit the wall because the backline's on higher ground. It will hit the wall. That's what the Reef Slider will do. Booyah Bomb. We've had uh, one viewing of Booyah Bomb. Booyah Bomb is another really aggressive special. It's also pressureful and it also puts a little bit of paint down. Now, since we've seen that footage, it seems like it's been nerfed at the same time. It could have been just the angle of where they threw the Booyah Bomb, but it doesn't look like it paints as much as it did. I think the Booyah Bomb is just really good. Even if it like doesn't completely always get a kill, putting a lot of pressure on one specific area, if you don't move, you will die and it will keep going, you know, that's the thing. On top of that, one thing I think it does really well is just how much it can help a team. Everybody on the team can booyah. People who booyah will gain special. In a game where specials are so dang strong, especially within where it's, uh, where we play it in Splatoon 2, Booyah Bomb is so dang good because it raises the special count or raises the special meter of everyone. It's a win-win. 
and if you pair two Booyah Bombs up, they're just boosting each other. There are some Splat Zones maps where you actually might find two people using Booyah Bombs. Pump that Pump Check, for example. And honestly, I think just because of that, I feel like Booyah Bomb can't be B. Like, obviously the shield that it gets, which is dope, it's really good. That shield can really only be broken, uh, like, if you're using, like, um, a really strong weapon, first of all, that can rapid fire, like a 52, and actually shred it. Or if you have two people. That situation should not happen all the time if you're using that Booyah Bomb in safe spaces. Because of the special uh, boost that it gives for everyone, because of the pressure that it also gives, just because, like, it gives people special, I think it deserves an A at least, you know? I think it is uh, at least the lowest A possible. It's, like, between A and B. Right. I think Wave Break is one of the best one of the best specials in the game, personally. In my honest opinion, I think it's generally one of the best specials in the game. And here's why, because there's just so many things that it does that you might not think of at first glance. Wave Breaker is the ultimate shark encounter. Throw it in a certain place where somebody might be sharking, they have to move. Wave Breaker forces any single person to jump. Jumping in this game as normal makes you slower. That's not good. Obviously, maybe the counterplay to that is doing squid rolls and all that type of stuff. But if you're aware of that they could do that squid roll, you just have to be the smarter player to space yourself well enough so that you don't fall for their squid rolling tricks. But the thing is at the same time too, they're gonna be forced to squid roll even more. Wave Breaker is throwable. You can throw it a decent distance. I don't know how far yet, but they've given it to Elia, which is pretty dang interesting. So I feel like it needs to be, it must have some sort of range. I feel like you can throw it like a cloud where you can throw it upwards and then it'll land somewhere. I've said all of this, but I haven't actually even said what the special even does. Because of course, if you're making people jump, you can shoot them while they're in the air, while they're having terrible RNG problems. 52 gal, 96 gal are pretty much dead of, uh, pretty much just, they just suffer. Charges have a field day when a wave breaker's out. Wave breaker applies damage. They get hit by the wave breaker three times. They die. They get marked as well, so everybody on the team knows where you're at. This special does so much. Let's just say you can destroy it. I think it'll be A. But if you can't destroy it, personally, I think it's an S tier. It's an S tier special because it does legitimately so much where it can either hurt, mark, make people jump. Again, another pressure special where it forces people to move. It does, it's doing so much that you might not notice at first when you throw it, you know? Personally, I think the wave break is gonna be really good. Like, if it can be destroyed, it's an A. If it can't, it's an S. Imagine putting a wave breaker on the zone, dude. It's just added pressure where it's just like, damn, now I have to, like, I have to think about jumping over this thing, this wave that's on the zone, and I wanna be close to the zone so I can contest it. And now that I'm jumping around, my movement's slow. So any single weapon that's that can really take advantage and just push me now can do that for free. And at the same time too, you can link other specials to make it even harder for you. So let's say you link uh, Killer Whale 5.1. It just makes people so vulnerable, you know? You can do so many things where I feel like you can play off it, you know? You can use it like a protected shield in a way. You can just use it so that people don't come close to you because people aren't going to want to be in the range with it where a wave breaker is. Try Zuka. Where can we put Trizuka? Trizuka only has three shots. It's not like Splatoon 1 Inkzuka. Splatoon 1 Inkzuka, you could shoot it at least five times. The range of it was amazing. Ridiculous range. In Splatoon 1, you had the, the Tentatex Splatter shot, and you were fine against an Elia because just because you have an Inkzuka. You had a long range option just to pressure that Elita. Personally, I think it does a lot more than the Reef Slider. I honestly feel like it might do more than Zipcaster, but that depends. I think it's a thing where it's kind of like Inkjet, where if you spot first or have the idea already of where somebody's going to be, then you should always get a free kill from it, you know? The setup should always give you a free kill. I think I gave it at least a B. Like, just behind Inkjet or around Inkjet. Because I feel like it does more or less the same thing that Inkjet does. Except you have less shots and you're grounded. But also, you can take out Inkjets pretty well with this, can't you? I think it's fair to be at least in B. I don't think it deserves A or S because with these kinds of specials, I think the thing that you have to realize is that pressure really does vary. It doesn't do anything extra like these things do where it may help the team. All these specials help your teammates, you know. Every single one of them. These are selfish, but they're just really good. These are just selfish. Like, you can kind of see the pattern here. Right. <laughs> it's time, guys. It's time. The moment you've all been waiting. 
the moment where you've all been waiting for. Because I know a bunch of you guys hate this weapon or hate this special, don't you? All right, guys, it's done. We're leaving it in D. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. There's a lot to say with Tenta Missile, especially for what it does in Splatoon 2. It does so much. It locates everybody, which is great. You get recon. It forces everybody on the team to move as long as you mark everybody. Some really good stray kills against everybody on the team. You can paint the floor just by using it. You can spam it. Here's the thing that's really difficult because it's blocked by Big Bubbler. And I want to believe that Ink Vacuum can use its Ink Vacuum to look at the sky and suck up all the missiles that are coming from the sky. Because if it is, we're putting this at S. <laughs> if that is the case, that is gonna be an S. But <laughs> that's, I, I really hope, because it'll be so funny if that's the case. But right now we're gonna leave the ink back at C. Well, at B for now. But I have the feeling though, that they will hopefully nerf this. I can't see them including Tenta missiles again, the way they are right now. I can't see them keeping Tenta missiles the same as they are right now in Splatoon. I feel like what they should do is nerf it. Like, like how it was before, where they slow down the shooting speed of it, maybe slow down the um, the missile speed. If the missile speed of it is slowed down, then it won't be that much of a problem. They should reduce the amount of ink coverage it also does, because it does so much, not gonna lie. They just basically need to set it back to where it was before, where the, when the game first came out, basically. I think they need to set it back to that point. I think it still being a good pressure special, it's still, it's still fine. Because you can still, like, obviously, if you're being located with missiles, move out the way a little bit and you should be fine. But I think the missile velocity needs to be slower. To make it less spammable at the same time, I feel like what they can do, like, like I said before, is that if they, the shooting speed of that, if that's slowed down, then it's going to not be as spammable. Weapons that also have this, it's also going to depend on those weapons. Like, if those weapons can't paint that well, then Tender Missiles aren't going to be so spammable. So the, for where it, for what it is, it might even just go down on this just because. I'm going to rate it in the assumption that it gets nerfed. For that rating, I am going to give it, I'm going to give it the highest A. It's very much like how the Killer Whale 5.1 is, but the Killer Whale 5.1 can only locate so many people. Tenta missiles can locate everyone and make people move just because of that. And it could also paint. So in that case, it does that much more. Just so you guys understand, I'm putting it in the highest A in the assumption. This is a prediction, by the way. Remember, prediction tier list, by the way. And from what I said, if it gets those nerfs, that's where I think it'll, it'll still it'll, it'll lie in. Because it's still going to apply pressure. It's still going to make people move. It's still going to make people... It's still gonna paint the floor. You're still gonna be able to know where everybody is on the map. And that, the end of my special tier list. This is what I think are going to be the best specials. These are gonna be in the S rank. These are A, these are B. And don't get me wrong, B is still really good. All these, to be honest, every single one of these specials are really dang good. In terms of how it helps the team, how much it's actually doing at the same time, how much pressure it's applying and all that type of jazz. This is where I think everything's going to lie, at least. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe. Do you guys agree with my decisions? Let me know in the comment section below. The Twitch chat is also saying subscribe to my channel. So if you're not doing that, then you're going to make all of these guys very, 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 very sad. See, look, guys, look what you're doing. Because you guys are not subbed. Look what you're doing to all these people. You can't make all these people sad, all right? What's wrong with you? Sub, like the video, all that type of stuff. Follow me on Twitch as well. Follow me on Twitter if you're as well. Follow my Discord channel. It's one of the greatest places to get to know other Splatoon 3 players, uh, get to play, play people who are also uh, trying to play Splatoon 3 as well. And it's also the best place to be notified when I'm going live for a Twitch stream and all that type of stuff. So it's a great place and I really appreciate it. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching this tier list. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I shall see you, all of you guys in a future video. Also, make sure to sub because the Twitch chat is becoming very angry right now that you're not subbed. So please do it.